anyway guys thanks for coming back thanks for tuning in if this is your first time watching one of my videos my name is Matt Samulski I'm Matt the Carga on this channel I do car reviews and I'm super excited today because thanks to Crown Acura in Clearwater Florida I am able to bring to you this brand new completely redesigned 2022 Acura MDX yes you heard it right this is a 2022 they skipped the 21 from 20 to 2022 brand new model what we're gonna do today I'm gonna take you on the tour of this entire vehicle of the exterior we're gonna check out the cool and amazing features on the interior of this car find out what hides underneath the hood and what's coming and then finally I'm gonna jump in and take you for a spin so if you're ready let's go Well guys, so we're gonna start right in the front, but let's get a few facts about the Acura. So Acura entered the market, US market, sometimes in the late 80s. And it's a luxury division of Honda automobiles. It's kind of like Lexus's to Toyota or Infiniti to Nissan. That's what Acura is to Honda. That's their luxury division. Now, the first MDX didn't show up until 2000. And then for the last 20 years, they've been making one of the top and very, very popular SUVs. And this is their newest generation, 2022 MDX. It's wider, it's longer, it's got more features, it's got more luxury technology than any other MDX before. So let's check out the front of it. The hood is much longer than on the previous version. And, you know, it's definitely different sculpted. I mean, it has those three body lines going on, kind of dividing that hood in two, gives you the more aerodynamic look. And then you have this grill. Now, the grill is wrapped in chrome right around here. But this is this piano shining black. And if you can take a look at this Acura logo, it's huge. And there's a reason for it. That's because where all the Acura sensing technology hides behind that grill. That's where all the sensors are. Now, it also looks like it's the center of the universe. Everything else, it kind of goes away from this and makes it for a really nice and clean design. What I also like about this, and I'm not opposed big grills, but they didn't make it an overkill with the grill of this vehicle like some other manufacturers do. So another interesting and new feature for this year of the MDX are the lights certainly a great looking light now it has this light signature this led that goes around it they call it the chicane and then you have multiple full led lights so there's four of those jewel lights right inside of it i have a similar setup on my honda pilot they're very bright they're very visible at night so great feature on this now I'm looking for the fog lights and this particular model doesn't have it maybe it's available on the advanced package or the higher trims what also is in here is what looks like the air intake but you know it's actually blocked there's nothing the air cannot go through it I mean it would be nice if they actually allow the air to go through it make it functional but there's probably a reason behind that maybe it's reserved for the new s type that's coming out later on this year but we're going to talk about this in just a little bit and then what else is here at the bottom here you have a little bit of this matte black and now this is actually open so the air goes inside of it and this grill 
half of it is blocked, half of it is open. So it allows a certain amount of air going into the engine bay to cool it off, but not the entire one. Um, again, I'm sure there is a reason behind it, but that's the front of this vehicle. Let's check out what powers up this 2022 MDX. This is Honda's tried and true 3.5 liter V6 engine. 290 horsepower. Now the difference between this and the previous generation ones that it's made it to a new 10 speed automatic transmission. Now this particular one is in front wheel drive. This is a front wheel drive vehicle. Now in the all wheel drive, this would be the super handling, which is able to transfer torque to front or back or side to side. So that's for a better handling vehicle. Now this is a front wheel drive. So we'll see how it handles. I have a very similar engine, same engine and my 2019 Honda Pilot, but I do have a nine speed automatic transmission. So I'll see if there's a difference in driving this versus my car. Well, let's take a look at the side view and the side view is a little bit different than the previous generation one. I think the hood sits a little bit higher and it's straight up, which makes it for this more aggressive look. I mean, this whole entire vehicle is longer. And, you know, a lot of times people think about the wheelbase, but they don't really tell you of why it's important. So it's important because the longer the car, the smoother the ride, the less bumps it's going to take. Obviously, if you have something shorter and you're going to run it kind of like the short jeep wranglers beautiful cars but i mean they're bumpy very bumpy because they have a very short wheelbase now this one extends the wheelbase from the previous generation one it also extended the track which means the width so that's wider and it's longer and it sits more aggressively on the ground i think it looks a little bit more sporty and a little bit muscular than the previous generation one as far as the design the whole new sheet metal all around the car nothing is the same as the previous generation ones but you can see some nice body lines one on top then there's this indentation which you can see in a lot more vehicles right now that's more for the aerodynamics as well as for the looks and this one is trimmed with this chrome right at the bottom of here as well as all around the windows a little chrome trim right on the mirror here also you have the turn signal incorporated in that mirror and this chrome trail starts right here right on the fender of this vehicle as far as the fender and the wheel treatments right here a little bit of that matte black the wheel itself this one sits on 20s so this is a 20 inch wheels they start at 19s and i believe you can go up to 21 inch wheels on the md axis decent design of the wheels but there's different ones that are available for you as well and you know as far as the body line on here it is pretty straight up all the way to the end which means that it should have enough headroom in both the second and the third row seat and i'm going to find out about that in just a little bit so let's take a look at the back area now just like the front just like the side this mdx is completely different in the back as well you can see this fully led lights now they start off really far away that's probably about a foot in to this quarter panel and they nicely wrap around different shape of the light it has the reverse light slash the turn signal right here that turns yellow of course when you're turning and then you have this fully led lights that go right inside of that back gate acura logo you have another led light that's right on top of here of course that's your brake light right here and then you have this shark fin spoiler kind of antenna that's in this vehicle again this one is the uh, tech model so it does have a little bit of that chrome trim you have some of the sensor backup sensors in here and at the bottom right here you do have two real exhaust tips now um, this looks probably more powerful than the vehicle is but they add to this design and the sportiness of this vehicle as well but what i'm interested in it doesn't have more room than the previous gen one than my pilot does so let's check it out you can open it several ways you can open it with the button on the inside of the vehicle you can open it just like i did plus you can open it with a remote on a completely brand new key fob so i'll show you that as well so let's check it out i mean you do have some room in the back and what i like about this that this is far front enough where you should get enough head clearance 
that it's not extending like on some of the vehicles that I've seen that you almost have your head on the back glass. So that's not the case in here. Let's check out what else is in here. So, so now you see the close-up of the back gate. There's a couple of very cool features. I have that on my Pilot as well, but I want to show it to you. See this part right here, okay? This is your cover, and what hides underneath here is, guess what? There's an additional storage compartment right in here, okay? And that can be either covered with this if you'd like to. Now, this is like felt covered in here. If you wanted it to be more durable, you can flip this around and now you have this plastic that's covering this. So you're not gonna have, like if you have pets, you're not gonna have any of the pet hair or, well, you still have pet hair, but it's gonna be easier to remove it. Or if you spill something, you're not gonna have stains because you can just wipe it off. Now, if you don't like having this on top and would like to extend your floor, you basically drop it down and then you put it right underneath here and voila, now you have this deep storage compartment that's behind the third row seat. What else is on the side in here? So on the side you have the power outlet. Now this is the 12 volt and it has an 180 watt max. This is a, a three kilo capacity, like a grocery bag hook. Now on some of the other models, which this one doesn't have, but some of the other one models, there's a button and that's for the closing of the gate, but not closing right away because if there, you push this button, if you have one on your trim of the MDX, it will allow you enough time because it has a sensor. So if you're standing underneath the gate, it won't close it. It will close it when you walk away from the vehicle. How hard it is to fold the seat? Basically, you push the lever, see I'm, I'm operating with one hand, and you move, push the seat forward, and do the same thing with the other seat. Now, actually, it is pretty easy to do, and to pull them back up, you basically do the opposite. So this is how much room you have with the seats folded down, the cargo, cargo area extended. One interesting feature about this, and we're gonna talk about this later, take a look at the size of this, middle seat. Now it transfers into a really nice console with the cup holders and a little bit of storage. We're going to talk about it next. next. Well, let's check out the roominess inside of here. Now, first of all, these seats are adjustable. So you can see I can s slide them back and forth. And now I have the front seat adjusted to my regular driving position. I'm six feet tall and I'm comfortable the way this seat is. Now I still have several inches of knee room in between my knees and the back of the seat. Now this is nice because it's adjustable too. Also I have enough clearance in here. Couple interesting features about this. First of all, I love these sunshades. The, this is, you know, that's what differences between this and the lower end, which is the base one. This one has the rear window sunshade. This is manual, but that's okay. As long as it has it, it is pretty cool. Now, as far as the trim, I love this espresso color on the interior. Leather wrapped door um, inside of here. Now, this is a little bit of that soft plastic. This is the trim that's kind of aluminum, but it's in this espresso color, which is awesome. Very nice, very nicely designed for this particular car. And check out the seats. Now, the espresso brown color is absolutely gorgeous, in my opinion. And this tray right here, see, when you wanna have two seats in the back, you can have this folded down, or, or, wait for it, you can remove that seat. So they actually made the best of both words, you know, as far as having the third person seat in the middle seat or having the captain chairs. But let's get and talk about the rear console right here. So what you have here is you have a power outlet, you have two USB-C ports right here, and this one on this particular one is blank. You can control your climate control through the buttons in here. If you had the advanced package, you'd have like the heated and ventilated seats in the back. You don't have it on this model, but you have your temperature control and fan control and then the display screen right here. Flat, almost flat floor. So it allows you for maximum leg room for passengers. Well, let's check out how this looks removed and we're gonna check out the roominess in the third row seat.
Okay, so this is how this seat looks removed from the car and this is how much room now you have to get in the third row seat. Now it's perfect for people with two child seats, just like myself, I have two child seats in the back and this one allows you to get into this third row seat. And it looks like maybe just a tad bigger than on my Pilot. Let me check it out. Well, so I'm in the back seat. See how much room I have in the front. Now I have this seat adjusted all the way to the back now. Okay, what I'm gonna do with this seat and see how much room we're gonna be able to save adjust it all the way to the front. So this seat pushed all the way to the front, which allows very little room for the passenger in this row, but for a child would be perfectly enough. So if you have two child seats and you wanna carry two adults in the back. All right, so let's see, third row seat, okay i slid over here in the back i have plenty of room you know on this side of the vehicle which the seat is all the way to the front i'm not even gonna attempt getting in this seat because i wouldn't be able to squeeze my legs on this side so essentially you'd have to move the seat to the front but if you do okay do you have enough room for two people I think so. I think it's actually a little bit more comfortable than on my pilot. Legroom, headroom, shoulder room, armrests, pretty comfortable. You know, I like this car. I, I, I think they did a nice job as far as designing it. And another nice feature, and that's available for pretty much the pilots and here, you have this one touch operation where you just press the button and the seat folds down and moves forward so you can actually okay so let's check out first of all of how the smart entry system works because you can see those three dots right here i have the key on me okay press the then even press it but just touch this and uh, the car locked as well as the mirrors folded in you do this you put your hand inside of the door handle it opens up now let's check out the sound of this door solid as any Honda would have that's great and let's check out the door okay so again this is the tack model and what you have here same trim as on the back of course this kind of brown aluminum which I really really like and not my favorite but this is the piano black you have three memory seat settings for the uh, passenger for the driver's seat now you also have this ELS studio 360 sound system which sounds absolutely amazing now I probably won't be able to uh, you know turn it on and show it to you on the on camera because of the copyright system but the buttons they change the buttons a little bit they're a little bit smaller they're still big enough to handle the job basically lock on lock mirror controls mill mirror folding button right here this is for child safety lock and this is your gate opening one of the ways you can open the back gate as well as you have another speaker and a little bit more storage room in here and we're going to jump right in here but before we do that let's check out of how the seats can be adjusted so now obviously just the regular positions of the seat i would like this maybe on the s type you will have that support for your knees although i didn't find it uh, uncomfortable when driving this and then you have the adjustment for the back and the lumbar right here as you can see i mean there's other options that are available on some of the other MDXs and that's because you have a series of buttons that are completely blank and I'd like to see of what's available in here but then you have your dimmer basically um, now I believe since this one doesn't have a fog light there might be a fog light button on the other ones you can turn off or on your parking sensor turn on or off your uh, traction control and then this is basically shows you all the safety feature of the vehicle that's your electronic parking brake right here and let's move on inside this vehicle steering wheel again it's a new steering wheel it's different and it has a bunch of buttons so we're about to decipher of what these are fully electronic instrument cluster as well as a brand new infotainment system this is the middle console right here let's go through it but before we do it because it is probably about 90 degrees outside let's push the magic button and see what happens i guess so the steering wheel itself you know on the left hand side you have controls basically for your radio and the audio system you can turn this on or off 
press this on now I have the volume down right now but if I turn the volume up a little bit you can see that right here and the volume control inside of here and then I can change different stations and you'll be able to see that on the main screen right here I have the apps button and this is what basically puts it on your middle screen so what do you want to do you want to do phone Alexa Apple CarPlay Android Auto those are the pre-installed apps you can go back that's basically tells you which drive mode you're in and you can have voice control on that side too now so what do you have this is a fully digital instrument cluster now it tells me that the hood is open so we close the hood and now you can see that on the left hand side you have basically the comfort settings on the right hand side you have like the trip computer it's measured the distance average fuel and all stuff now it's very strange that it doesn't have like a regular tachometer or regular a speedometer right in here and maybe that's just I don't know how to get to it and so I actually could not find the settings for the, the main screen so I guess this is the way that you know we have to deal with it as far as the layout I want to see is uh, if you turn on your blinkers and you take a look at this little car picture in there it shows the blinkers on so I mean this is good it should be like in your face because some people drive with those blinkers on for miles and miles and miles without actually even knowing that they're there so if you press the brake pedal see the brake light goes on so this is a nice indication kind of like you see on some of the Tesla cars I wonder if it has the like the sonar sensing and we're gonna find that out while driving it let's move on to this brand new screen right here and the first thing that all of the reviews that I've seen and all of the people that said it goes like this is not a touch screen this is a really bad thing and you know what I I'm like you you know I like to touch it and be able to um, actually move this however the way that the screen is situated would have to reach out pretty far so I gotta give it to Hannah that why make this uncomfortable to, for somebody because people would be complaining hey the screen is too far we can't reach it so I make it a touch screen so instead of that they made this trackpad basically right here and the way you use it is you move your finger around slide it left to right and then when you find something you press it okay and then actually it selects that actual selection I have the back button if in case you get lost home button in case you want to go back to the screen so I'll show you how that looks we're not gonna go through like all of them well this vehicle has a navigation system so basically I'm just tracking my finger on the trackpad navigation I press yes okay now I have to kind of figure out of which one highlights find and then you go to search and then you put your address or you know or you can draw a letter you can do it different ways so at least there is a way to use the trackpad for it you can probably do it with the uh, voice as well and select the navigation system here now the screen is split in two right so you can see the left side of the screen the right side of the screen and this is you know where you have this big of real estate why not make it a full screen same thing here I'll put it in reverse so it's a rear view camera it's a decent quality rear view camera okay it does have those guidelines that move with the steering wheel you have this three four different views right so you have the straight down view you have the narrow angle view you have the wide angle view so you have the different views in here and if it was equipped with a 360 I would say that this car right on the side that picture of the car that's where the 360 would be so actually not too bad but I would like it to be able to see the entire screen filled with the navigation that would be kind of nice go back home let's see what else we have as far as the settings right in here so we have the navigation now it is equipped with the wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto so this one definitely will take some getting used to it I'm not sure it, it's kind of one of those things that I'm not really a big fan of to be honest with you but you know it is what it is now there's two different trackpads one of them to controls this big screen and then this one little one it controls the side screen see it highlights right now and actually I can go to either radio or navigation 
or you know whatever I customize in here so that's basically what you see on the right hand side volume knob is also in a place where you know you probably would be looking for it right here okay and the volume knob is right here this is also your different station buttons so uh, it's I'm not saying it's bad I'm just saying that it's different than any other car that I've driven and maybe that's kind of going to be a Honda signature but it definitely will take some time getting used to so that's the navigation screen and the infotainment system I probably would rather sacrifice that uh, distance of it even though it's pretty good because you know it's it's far away where you see it and uh, you know you, you don't you're not tempted to touch it but it's also um, nicely placed so you, you're not distracted with uh, the uh, shine from the sun in here so uh, right here at the bottom of it you have the shortcuts for your air conditioning system and the heating system so you can see all those buttons those are the regular buttons for it and that displays right here and this big knob right here this is for your dynamic mode and this is actually going to show up the dynamic mode is going to show up right here so let's see what's available okay so you have sport that's really fast normal okay comfort and snow and it's going through the blizzard that's a pretty cool animation that's kind of new to Honda it used to actually show up right in the middle screen in the instrument cluster and now it shows up right here right next to it on one side you have the uh, heated seats on the driver's side now this one doesn't have ventilated I know there is an option for ventilated seats for the higher trim levels and then you have your regular gear shifter well this is the electronic gear shifter you know park reverse neutral and then uh, drive and sport mode now speaking about sport mode it does have the pedal shifters right here honestly I've used it on my car maybe once since I got it so if it's not a sports car don't mess with it at least that's my idea automatic engine on and off you can turn that idle switch off or on brake hold okay little charging station this is actually a pretty cool feature it opens up it has the USB-C and the regular USB port okay and this is your big wireless charging okay put your phone in it now this is the big phone and then and turn that on or off and your phone should start charging this supposedly is your palm rest to put your palm on while you're using this again a little bit of a learning curve aesthetics of this vehicle I really like it I like the interior of it but I also like the combination of different textures shines um, like let's start over here soft touch really kind of like leather wrap it's not leather now this is this aluminum brown trim not my favorite piano trim it's gonna leave a lot of you know fingerprints and all that stuff and then you have the again leather wrapped at the bottom of it okay and on the sides the same color as the seats okay now if you were worried that hey they took away my regular plug right here well worry nothing because it is right in here on the passenger side right here you have your regular power outlet so don't worry they didn't take it away they just put it in a different place over here you have another power outlet too so worry nothing and then you have the USB port inside of your storage compartment and here you have your regular glove box and let's take a look at the top console right here and see what it is regular mirror it does not have this rear view mirror where uh, this turns into a screen which would be nice but nevertheless this is a pretty nice feature okay and now this one is equipped with this panoramic sunroof so we'll see how much room how much light it adds to the vehicle and a nice very nice windscreen okay so you can have it open like this let's see if it goes any further okay yeah, it does it actually adds quite a bit of light it adds a lot of air inside of here so nice big panoramic sunroof good job on this for Acura 
So you have the uh, assist button right here and then you have the Acura link button and then you can we can close that top cover for the sunroof. All right guys, so I'm about to take this for a spin. I'm excited about it because I've been driving a Honda Pilot for you know the last year and a half. Next year we're gonna have to make a decision. This one was one was on our list when we we're looking for a car, but the lack of the pass-through in the middle row seat to the back eliminated this from our shopping list. So two things before we started. Okay, Acura has this brand new key, Acura key, a little bit smaller, um, which is nice. I mean, it doesn't, it's not really bulky. It doesn't stick out in your pocket like some of the other keys. Price, okay? So it is considered a premium luxury brand of Honda, right? So when we're talking about the Honda Pilot that started in the mid thirties and it ended at 50, like one or $52,000 with the all wheel drive. Now, you'd be nicely surprised that this one, actually the base model starts at 46.9 with the front wheel drive and about 48.9, so $2,000 more with the SH all wheel drive. SH means super handling all wheel drive that basically it adds to, because it, it's able to transfer torque front to back also side to side to help with the steering of this vehicle in you know in four-wheel drive mode so the technology package which is the second package is the one that we're sitting in right now it's a 51.6 and the sh all-wheel drive price for that is 53.6 then there's an a spec package which is 41 and that is only available in the all-wheel drive it's 57.1 and then finally the advanced build package is 60,650, 60,650. It's also available in the SH all-wheel drive only. And then the S line, which is gonna have 355 horsepower or something like this, that's coming this summer. I can't wait because this would be the only time where Acura, other than the equipment on the vehicle, would have the MDX would have two different engine options. And that's super excited because that's 60 more horsepower would be really, really well received. I think so, especially in the uh, on the market. So let's take a look at a couple of things. First of all, let's see of how this vehicle turns and what is that turning radius on here. We already looked a little bit on the rear view camera, so I'm not gonna really go in depth on this, but I wanna check out and see the turning radius on this vehicle. So see, really nice sensors in front approaching object the whole screen turns red that means that hey watch out you're about to hit something or you know maneuver away from it. we didn't hit anything so steering wheel all the way in let's see how many spots it takes one two three four and just a little bit so that's awesome that is a very tight turning radius and really quick switch it back to reverse okay again i'd like this camera screen to be a little bit bigger but it has everything that we need so let's get it on the road and let's see some main driving dynamics of this vehicle as far as acceleration cornering and overall feel of this car so we're going to get it up in here in just a little bit and we'll see if it's any different that 10 speed automatic transmission that one gear more does it make that much difference we're about to find out maybe we won't be able to find out because we are in the afternoon traffic but overall, let's see which mode I'm in. Right now, as far as the driving mode, I'm in the normal. Let's switch it to sport. So that adjusts the settings on the gears a little bit. And actually, yeah, you can hear it a little bit and you can definitely feel it as far as the suspension and as far as the overall feel of this vehicle now overall it feels good it's got a really nice visibility really very few if any blind spots i can't really see any blind spots maybe right behind the third row seat 
which you know I can deal with that if that's the only one I'm gonna about to check out the turning actually I wasn't crazy about the display at first now they drive it I think it makes a lot of sense I mean it has the big speedometer but it also has that tachometer right above it so it tells you of what rpms you're at steering wheel feels solid feels good to the touch nice acceleration i think that 290 horsepower i mean it's substantial for this class of the vehicle so yeah overall great job acura on uh, redesigning this MDX really makes a big difference as far as the drive dynamics, as far as the overall look and feel of this vehicle. We'll see an acceleration from a speed. You can hear a little bit of that engine, but it doesn't really struggle. It's fairly effortless. I'm really excited to test as soon as it comes out hopefully i'll be able to test the type s because that is going to be the biggest difference at 60 horsepower i have a feeling that's going to be a bomb but you know guys the price on it too it starts where the pilot ends i should say basically it does have starts in forty six thousand dollars. that's probably the least expensive luxury SUV that you can get third row seat certainly doable a lot bigger in this one than in some of the other vehicles in its class so those are the things that I really really like so the performance the look the features the amenities and the one thing that I really don't care too much about and is this infotainment system I, I just don't think that that's very user friendly as far as where this trackpad is positioned and the way that uh, you have to control it. I would like to see a little bit more control over you know, the features of the vehicle, a little bit more customization of the vehicle. Overall, at 50 and low 50s, you can't go wrong with this car. It's very inexpensive comparing to the competition. Overall, a great entry into the segment. Um, I will give this vehicle a huge thumbs up. Even though this infotainment system is not the best, I still can get used to it in the heartbeat. So don't discount it if you're looking for a vehicle in this class, in this segment, mid-size sport utility. Definitely check them out. Check the guys over at Crown Acura. They have a nice selection of new and pre-owned vehicles. And I'm going to post a link in the description of this video. And guys if you like watching videos like this please hit like and subscribe hit that little bell button so you get notified every time i post a new video and i post twice a week and i will see you in my next video cheers